We are Maria and Nicole. We're two secular homeschooling moms that have been been there, done done that. that. As parents and homeschoolers, we understand the importance of nurturing a lifelong passion for literature and finding the right books can make all the difference. This is especially important during those middle school years as your kids begin to read more hearty chapter books on their own. Today in episode 42, we're going to be giving you strategies to ignite a love for reading during this age and share an exciting list of books that helped our kids fall in love with literature. And as usual, we want to stress that our podcast is an inclusive space for your everyday parents that are looking for education options. We are not here to convince you to homeschool. Uh, We want to stress that you need to do what works for your child and for your family. Every family is different. Absolutely. And you know your children best. So uh, feel free to take what advice or information you get from here that works for you and chuck the rest. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Maria. How's it going? It's going great. What are you up to? Well, I just got back from like a whirlwind trip. I moved my son out of his apartment and then like zipped over across the country to grab my other kid from camp. Oh, wow. That's how long were you gone? (laughs) Like Five days. Oh my but gosh. I feel like I flew like 800 flights. <laughs> I'm exhausted still. Well, my daughter is all settled in. We talked about that. And Yay. I have been redoing her room and I have been lounging in there reading. I've been oh, reading, reading, reading so I many books. I love it. Yeah. Have you read some anything good? Well, I just started this one book that I think probably everybody in the world has read, but I am intrigued. Gone Girl. Have you read that? Oh, yeah. Is that Jillian... I can't remember the author, but Gone Girl. Oh my gosh, this guy's wife disappears. Oh, oh yes, yes, I remember this. And now I just found out. I don't want to give too much away. I just will say I, I just found out that he was having an affair. Oh yeah, with yeah. a twenty-three-year-old student. It's a doozy. Okay. I think they made a movie out of it. Okay, don't. Okay, I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to watch the movie. Sometimes <laughs> it spoils the book. But <laughs> yeah, well, you know, my husband's not really a reader, and so there's a lot of books that I'll read that I'm like, okay you have to watch this movie but then I'm really annoying about it because like while he's like if I see him pick up his phone I'm like you have to watch this part it's not as good as the book do you say that I do I do do. or I'll be like here are the things I read Lonesome Dove which I love and then I made him watch like the tv miniseries from the 70s and then I was like here's the things that were different about the book versus yeah. The thing, and he's like, Oh my god, just let me <laughs> watch this. <laughs> I really love doing that though. I love reading a book and then watching a show. Oh, yeah, I do too. And That's one of the most fun things. Yeah, oh my gosh, I finished a book yesterday morning called Lily and the Octopus. It's by Stephen Rowley, and it was a tearjerker. If you've ever loved a dog, it's a great book, but I cried all morning. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of that one book, Remembering Win Dixie. Oh, Winn-Dixie? because of because of Win Dixie. Because of Win Dixie. Oh, that was a tearjerker. I, you know what? I can't read books about dogs dying. Oh. I can't. Oh, that was a spoiler, I guess, for <laughs> Lily and the Octopus. <laughs> Not like you couldn't know that that was going to happen, but oh my gosh, it just like all the feels. Then I was emotionally undone for the rest of the day. So happy books though let's talk about books today yeah I'm really excited to get into this one because we did that early reader book list yeah and episode and uh we got some great feedback but everybody's like but what about for older what about the older ones especially the middles the middles always get forgotten they do and you know in that whole dynamic landscape of like middle school age education and stuff there's one factor that's going to stand out and that's reading this fundamental skill serves as a gateway to academic achievement and personal growth and then that lifelong learning that we always talk about and so by immersing themselves in a world of books middle schoolers can develop crucial skills and expand their knowledge and unlock like a whole world of opportunities oh yeah for sure we talk about charlotte mason all the time she was a 19th century british educator and she believed in the power of living books and a more holistic approach to education Living books are well-written, engaging books that come alive and captivate the reader's imagination. Facts and other information are often more easily retained when learned in this story form rather than using dry textbooks with no context. 
Yeah, we've both always subscribed to this homeschool style. And, uh, you know, we're both big readers ourselves. I'm the granddaughter of a children's librarian, and she packed my room with books like my entire life. So it's not really a surprise that I would advocate for a literature based lifestyle. Right. I'm so jealous of that. We didn't really have a lot of books growing up, and I didn't really fall in love with literature until probably my upper 20s, early 30s. Oh. Yeah, but then I was totally hooked. Yeah. Yeah. We really encourage you to take your kids to visit libraries, explore bookstores. There's some really cute little quaint magical ones here in Dallas if yeah. you ever visited That's also those. my favorite thing that we do when we're out of town. We always visit local bookstores in I other cities. That. Yeah. Yeah, you can also create a home library with all your favorites and make it easily accessible to your kids. By surrounding them with a wide range of quality literature, you're going to be taking the first step to encouraging a lifelong love of reading. Right. You can create a reading culture within your home just by setting aside like a dedicated time for reading too. Designate a cozy reading nook, maybe establish like regular family reading sessions and just model that love of reading by reading alongside your children. Right. And you also want to celebrate milestones when your kids complete a book or reach a reading goal. You can also have book discussions as a family. By making reading a cherished family activity, you're going to reinforce the value of literature in your children's lives. One of the first big books that my son finished was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And afterward, we headed to this super cute old fashioned candy shop. And I let him pick out some of his favorites, and it was a really memorable day and way to celebrate, you know, his accomplishment. I love that. You also want to let your kids see you reading often as well. Uh, one of my friends who's not a homeschooler, they would always have like a dedicated reading time after dinner, like she and her husband, and um, they would all just read to themselves. And so they always were modeling that reading for joy kind of moment right and a lot of parents go and say okay go read a book are you reading and and the parents on their phone right right the kids are like that's not fair yeah let's let's model that that's super important yeah reading opens up the door to a wealth of information and ideas and it allows students to explore different cultures historical events scientific discoveries and social issues and we're going to talk about that in some really great books here yeah by immersing themselves in books and articles and various texts middle school students are going to expand their knowledge and broaden their perspectives and develop a deeper understanding of the world around them. And all of these are things that we're hoping to, you know, nurture and for them to grow into as they move on and get ready for high school. Middle school marks a pivotal stage for refining reading skills. Regular reading practice helps kids bolster their vocabulary, their comprehension, fluency, and critical thinking abilities. These skills lay the groundwork for success across various academic subjects and sets the stage for more complex content as they enter high school. Right. Reading forms the backbone of achievement in all disciplines, too, whether it involves deciphering math word problems, analyzing historical texts or comprehending scientific articles. Proficient reading skills are indispensable. Yeah, I think everyone would agree that reading is the cornerstone and foundation of all learning. Yep, my grandma always said, if you can read, you can cook (laughs) or you can do, you know, basically you can do anything. If you you can read, you can teach yourself how to do anything. Opens the door. Middle school introduces students to more complex texts and engaging with more complex content, and it really empowers kids to navigate and tackle academic challenges with confidence. And the significance of reading extends well beyond just subject-specific knowledge. It's going to play a vital role in language development and communication skills. And by immersing themselves in diverse genres and styles, students are going to expose themselves to a range of sentence structure and vocabulary writing techniques. This exposure is really going to enhance enhance their writing, it's going to improve their ability to articulate thoughts effectively, and it's going to fortify their overall communication skills. Absolutely. Reading also serves as a catalyst for critical thinking skills like analysis, evaluation, and synthesis. Exploring complex texts challenges students to really grapple with different viewpoints and perspectives. Consequently, it sharpens their critical thinking abilities and they develop the capacity to form well-grounded opinions themselves. These skills prove invaluable for problem solving and decision making in so many aspects of their life. Oh my gosh, so many. And we understand that for some kids in this age bracket, reading may not be a favorite activity. Especially if your child was maybe pulled from like a negative school environment that didn't foster a love of reading. But you can help guide them to rediscover this joy of reading. 
It's totally okay also to do books as read-alouds if you have a kid that maybe isn't a strong reader or is kind of struggling with some uh, different level books. Read them aloud. Yeah, for sure. We talk often about how we've continued to do read-alouds well into high school. You want to explore different genres like adventure and mystery, fantasy, or even graphic novels. And that's one reason that we came up with this fantastic list. There's really something for everyone. Oh, for everyone. And time can be a challenge, too. So, you know, setting aside reading time each day could be during a quiet moment before bed or during a cozy weekend afternoon. Make it a habit, and soon you'll find yourself eagerly anticipating that special reading time. I read my nonfiction every morning because of our 75 hard. Are you doing that right now? (laughs) No, but I still have continued to do that. I found I liked to get up and instead of getting on like social media or like something first thing in the morning, I like to do my chapter of my nonfiction. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I did like that part of the 75 hard challenge. Yeah. So remember, reading is not about speed. Take your time to enjoy and savor the story. Also, help them to not be discouraged by the size of a book. Some of those books are really intimidating when you look at how fat they are. So with those larger novels, you'll want to teach them to break it into smaller chunks, reading a few pages at a time or a chapter at a time, and before you know it, they finish the whole book. Books can be incredibly inspiring. Reading opens up a world of imagination and knowledge. It really does. The magic of reading lies in its ability to ignite imagination, foster creativity. And as middle schoolers delve into fictional worlds, they're going to visualize all these different characters and settings. And and it's really going to nurture their creativity. And, you know, by relating to characters and their experiences, students can explore their own emotions. Middle school serves as a crucial phase for cultivating a love for reading that extends far beyond the school years. And by encouraging regular reading habits and nurturing a passion for books yourself, you can instill a lifelong love for learning and personal growth. So books are a wonderful source for inspiration, and we encourage you to gift this to your children. And I wanted to say one more thing, too, about when we talk about books, we're also including audiobooks and graphic novels in here. I know there's a lot of people who think like graphic novels aren't the same as reading but they really are and you know whatever it takes to nurture a love of reading for your child is okay a child that struggles with reading themselves might find it handy to like listen to an audiobook while following along in a regular book too. right yeah we did that when they were really young it actually helped them learn to read better it does the more you read the better you get at reading practice makes perfect right and we're always driving somewhere so those audiobooks are super and they're free off from the library from Libby. yeah yeah, yeah. exactly So just a reminder that this is a weekly episode. We drop one every Thursday morning just for you. And if you have any additional ideas or comments, please come and comment on our Facebook page on the episode thread or send us an email at info at btdthomeschool.com. We'd really love to hear from you. Okay, now the following books that we list have captured the hearts and imaginations of not only our kids, but we love them too. We're including a variety of books from magical worlds to thought-provoking themes. But know that there's no way that we can cover all of our favorites in one podcast episode. So we're going to be creating an entire page that lists all of our favorites with a short synopsis for each one to find just the right book for your middle schooler. And these have become cherished favorites throughout our homeschooling journey. So grab a cozy spot and dive into all these books. What's the first one, Nicole? The Penderwicks. This is a series by Jean Birdsall. It follows the adventures of the Penderwick family, four sisters and their dad, uh, Rosalind, Skye, Jane, and Batty. And my daughter's name is Jane, so she always really appreciated a book series that had somebody with her name in it Mm -hmm. that's not 80 years old. And um, the books are set in Massachusetts and kind of talk about the sisters' escapades and their interactions with various characters they encounter. And they're just very sweet and wholesome books. Oh, yeah. I love that series a lot. The next one is The Borrowers, and it's a series of children's fantasy novels written by Mary Norton. The series focuses on a family of tiny people who live secretly in the houses of human beings and borrow items to survive. They're so cute. I loved them. And they reminded me of, remember the TV show, The Littles? I do remember The Littles. We are The Littles. I used to imagine like being in there with the little... Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. No, it's super cute. I love those. Uh, There's four of them, I think. Um, The next set is uh, Gone Away 
Lake, and uh, there's a sequel, Return to Gone Away. These are by Elizabeth Enright, which, by the way, I'm a huge Elizabeth Enright fan, and I actually recommend every single one of her books. But these two, if you're going to start with something, are just awesome. They're old. They were written in 1957, a story of two cousins, Portia and Julian, and they discover an abandoned community called Gone Away Lake during their summer vacation. Mm. I still like think about these books all the time. The next one is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. And this is a timeless classic and it introduces young readers to the power of imagination and the joy of following Harry's incredible journey. And who doesn't love Hagrid? But unfortunately, J.K. Rowling's hateful statements have steadily grown more blatant over the years. And it really caused me to be conflicted on whether or not I wanted to recommend this book. But ultimately, I wanted to mention it because these books were really cherished for years in my home. And the story is not a hateful one. And it's worthy of mention. Yeah, my kids are huge Harry Potter fans. We've always loved the books, the movies, everything. I think it's really important that sometimes we separate the story from the author. Yeah. Right? That's that's all we can do. Because they really are great books. They really are good books. The next series is called Swallows and Amazons. Uh, This is a series of children's adventure novels written by Arthur Ransom. These are also, like, really old books. Um, It is about another, like, family of kids who sail a small boat called Swallow on a fictional lake. And they encounter another group of children uh, who sailed their boat. And they have this crazy summer full of imaginative and exciting adventures. They camp out on an island and there's pirates and treasure hunting. It's they're really, really cute. Oh, yeah, those are super cute. The next one is The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. And Riordan introduces mythology in a really fun and accessible way. Mm -hmm. My daughter was totally obsessed with Greek mythology when she was younger. I think she kind of still is. Yeah, me too. Yeah, this is an epic adventure of mythical proportions for sure. And you can tag along with Percy Jackson, which is a half-blood hero. As he battles monsters, he uncovers divine secrets, and gets caught up in all sorts of hilarious and dangerous situations. We discussed in our Learning Disabilities episode, how Rick's own child suffered from dyslexia just like the demigods he depicted in his books and it actually inspired him to write the books oh my gosh and they're awesome books like my kids got into them again the second time like during COVID they reread all yeah, of them they're so good it's a great series and there's a bunch of those as well and like a sequel series and he's got other stuff too again probably we'd recommend everything by Rick Riordan yeah he's he's really great he's awesome uh, the next is the Chronicles of Narnia uh, which uh, starts with the lion the witch and the wardrobe actually it's debatable which one it starts with but that's the one most people read first by C.S. Lewis and uh, these are again old old books Uh, you step through the wardrobe and embark on an epic adventure in a land of mythical creatures and epic battles and we really just uh, liked the way Lewis weaves together fantasy and moral lessons and it's just it's a thrilling read yeah timeless The next are The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. You can follow Katniss Everdeen as she battles it out in a deadly televised competition. This thrilling series will keep your middle schooler on the edge of their seat. There's three books in the series. The kids used to play this in our co-op. They would fight to the death with the foam swords we actually created in one of the classes that we taught. (laughs) Right. And yeah, they had a great time. They would put them up in a big cornucopia and run and grab them and kill each other. Because that's what (laughs) homeschoolers do. (laughs) They do. I know. I remember reading those books when they first came out. And then my kids begging to read them. And I was like, mm, I feel like you have to be like 13. But th- then eventually I think everybody read them anyway and just and loved them. And there's movie versions as well. For, yeah. You know that. Next is The Hobbit. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. T- Tolkien? I always say Tolkien. Tolkien. I'm not sure how we say it. Yeah. We actually chose to do this one on audiobook. But oh, it's that's such a, a good, good idea. Because I started out with this one as a read aloud. And in the very first chapter, they introduce you to like 87 characters. And I do voices. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) How did you keep up? Oh, I couldn't. It was so bad. It was so bad. But um, it's, you know, introduce your child to the captivating world of Middle Earth with Bilbo Baggins and it's his thrilling adventure. Um, And the rich storytelling and the vivid descriptions, you really get transported to this land of dwarves and dragons and daring quests. They're awesome. And those are also the, he's, that's the author of the Lord of the Rings book, which I think are. Right. Yeah. This is a prequel to that. Yeah. But they're all awesome. Yeah. And moving on to our next book is Wonder by R.J. Palacio. 
Oh my gosh, prepare to have your heart melted. This is such a heartwarming and thought-provoking book that tells a story of Augie, who's a boy with a facial difference, and he's navigating the challenges of middle school. And we love how it promotes empathy and acceptance and really the power of kindness and friendship. It's so heartwarming. Yeah, it's a great one. book. The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is my favorite. This dystopian novel was like one of my personal favorites. I mean, imagine living in a society where everything is controlled, even your emotions. And it's mind blowing as the main character Jonas unravels the truth about his seemingly perfect world. It'll make you question like everything that you thought you knew. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this book stays with me. Actually, I kind of want to reread it. Have so you seen have you seen the movie? There's also a movie of it. I have not. I'm always afraid sometimes if I love it so much to see the movie. I know it's very different. Yeah. It is. Yeah, but, maybe I'll yeah. just read the book again. The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. You can step into the shoes of Anne Frank and experience her remarkable journey during World War II and the Holocaust. Through her personal diary entries, you'll see a glimpse of her fears and hopes and dreams, and it's very powerful. It's very moving account. It's going to stay with you. And this memoir really gives a glimpse into more darker period of history, but it emphasizes the strength of the human spirit. I, it's definitely worth reading. Oh, for sure. The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. You meet a group of exceptionally gifted children who are recruited to infiltrate a secret society and save the world from a villain. And it's packed with puzzles and wit and teamwork. And this series keeps you guessing until the very end. Oh, books, my kids love this as a read aloud when they were really young. I love this one. It, it was really good. It was really weird. It is weird. It's but weird. You but... know what? When they're little, their imaginations are like going yeah. wild. So my kids were invested. Yeah. My older kids loved this. So my younger one did not want to read the book. And Netflix just came out with a show. I think it's, oh, yeah, it Tim just started the, that the other day. The second series. And we started to watch it. And it's pretty awesome. So, you know, okay. I recommend that one. i that. The next one would be The Maze Runner by James Dashner. This is a dystopian novel where Thomas wakes up in a mysterious maze with no memory of his past at all. And it's an entire series and it's absolutely fantastic. So good. I don't think I've read those. Like my kids all have. But oh, they're I so good. Okay, maybe I'm going to add them to my list. I think that's a movie. Yeah, too. there's at least two of them, I think. Yeah, so good. Or maybe I'm confusing that with Blade Runner. Well, is that the I same, haven't is that the seen same thing? the movies, so no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of the things I'd be at trivia Blade Runner, and Jen would be like, that's not what it is, but I know what you're talking about, and it's Maze Runner. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. The Fault in Our Stars oh, by tear John jerker, Green. Tear jerker. Oh my goodness. So prepare to laugh, cry, and just be moved by this touching story of Hazel and Gus. They're two teenagers. They're living with cancer. My kids actually do not let me watch this or read this in the same room with them because <laughs> even if I catch the last five minutes of this movie, I will like cry uncontrollably. <laughs> And they are super embarrassed. But it's definitely a touching story. It is so good. Yeah. My, I had my son read this actually last year. Oh, my gosh. It's yeah. cool. Uh, then there's The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. And rival gangs and teenage struggles are in this timeless coming of age novel. It's set in the 60s. Friendship, loyalty, social class can resonate with young readers even today. My son loved this book. He loved it so much that he absolutely refused to watch the movie because he didn't want it to ruin the book in his mind. I guess he's a little like me. Yeah, I just read that one like last summer for the first time. I somehow never read it in high school. So good. And one of the things that I did not know was it's written by a woman and it's all these uh, male characters and uh, it's uh, like everybody talks about how very accurate and yeah it's interesting the perspective the next book is the secret garden by burnett and this is also an old classic you enter the magical world of an abandoned garden and witness the transformative power of nature and this is a really real timeless classic it celebrates beauty of friendship and resilience and the wonders of the natural world um i also did this one on audiobook and i remember the reader was just absolutely incredible we love we love this book the next one is Holes, and this is a hilarious and twisted adventure. And the main character gets sent to a camp, and he has to dig holes every single day. But there's so much more to it than just digging. There's secrets to uncover and friendships to be made, and really a lot of unexpected surprises that'll totally keep your kid reading. You just will not put this book down. Oh my gosh, I feel like I have not read this one. I it's need so to, good. or maybe I've forgotten. 
Uh, the next one is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langell. This science fiction classic tackles themes of love and courage and the power of individuality. I think they came out with a movie version of this in the I last couple so. years, too. This one, I did like this one. My oldest liked it, but my youngest did not like this one. Yeah, I think I had a mixed bag. It, it's a weird book, yeah. and it's super sci-fi, and it's very old. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of interesting, but I also thought like some of the science fiction stuff for being an old book was like it's pretty good yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's, sure. it's kind of current so i don't know the next one on the list is ender's game by orson scott card this book is set in the future where child prodigies are trained to save humanity ender emerges as a brilliant strategist and it, this one's also a movie it's so good um i know it's a movie because i was leading my hiking group in louisiana through the woods and uh, we were at fountain blue state park which is a park on lake pontchartrain it's got a swim beach that is so big it looks like the ocean and uh, we walked out of the woods and accidentally onto the set of ender's game really yes there's pictures no there's a whole we weren't allowed we were like shooed off the set right away by security but um i guess there there must be some kind of ocean scene in the movie i've never seen it but um yeah we were all excited we were like oh we went on a hike saw some alligators and harrison ford that's amazing <laughs> it was oh really cool god. oh my gosh yeah my five minute claim to fame actually i don't even know if harrison ford was there but <laughs> it was pretty cool Another old series is Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. Followed the delightful and imaginative Anne Shirley, she finds her place in the world of Avonlea. And Montgomery's vivid descriptions and Anne's infectious spirit make this classic a joy to read. I love Anne of Green Gables. And there's been many adaptations of shows. Like the most current is like a Netflix series. I think it's called Anne with an E. I haven't uh, watched that one, but... We're big Anne of Green Gables yeah, fans. Yeah, it's a at my classic. House. It's definitely old fashioned, but super uplifting. Yeah. I like that one a lot. And she's a character. Yeah, she's sure. something. The next one is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. And this is one of the best historical fiction novels that I have ever read. And this is a moving story it's set in Nazi Germany. It follows Elisa Memminger as she steals books and finds solace in the power of words. Appropriately for the times, death is our narrator mm -hmm. and a major character in the book. It's really such a good book and makes you realize that there really are good people in the world. So you wouldn't think being such a dark topic, but it's it's, it's really good. That is a really great book. Um, another really great book is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Experience the transformational journey of Scout Finch as she learns about racial injustice and the power of empathy. Uh, Lee's masterpiece tackles profound themes with grace and makes it an essential read for every young mind. I also just saw a stage version of it recently and you it was did. absolutely fantastic. The next one is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This is a fantasy tale about a young girl named Luna, a witch in a magical forest, and it's such an enchanting story. It explores themes of like love and sacrifice and the power of stories. It's a bit dark in the beginning, but the story is so beautifully written and it's great for all ages. This would be a good read aloud for those who aren't quite reading yet, too. So it's so good. Yeah. Next is A Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. Uh, you join the Baudelaire siblings, Violet, Klaus, and Sonny, and they navigate a series of unfortunate events after their parents' tragic deaths. And these are, they're dark, but they're also like super humorous. There's quirky characters, clever wordplay, mysterious plots. It's also, I think, a movie and a show. Yeah, we and... saw the show after we read all the books. Yeah, so... they, they really are great books, not as dark as you would think. And on audio, I think the first three or four of them, there's a bunch in the series, are narrated by Tim Curry. So yeah, and and they're brilliant. Like the oh, kids they are. are like the kids are brilliant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I mean, the whole <laughs> yeah, they, they're really great books. Yeah. Oh, the next one on the list, the one and only Ivan. It's such a heartfelt story of Ivan, who's a gorilla, and he lives in captivity in a shopping mall. And the book is written from Ivan's perspective, and your kids will learn about friendship, freedom, and the importance of compassion. And this story was written simple enough for young readers to read on their own, yet it's well written enough to enable the meaningful discussions around whether or not humans are good or bad, because, you know, should he be in this captive environment? Yeah, it's also a tearjerker. And when the, there's a sequel that came out, or maybe a movie came out of it, and my daughter was like, I'm not going to watch that with you. <laughs> because she knew I cried and cried and cried my way through this book. <laughs> 
And after you finish listening to this episode, be sure to visit our website. We're going to write up all of the show notes and have links to everything that we're talking about. So it's just really easy for you to access and reference. Every week, I like to create free resources that complement that episode. So be sure to sign up to our newsletter so you don't miss any of that exclusive content. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, we would love it if you went out there and gave us a thumbs up or even comment on the episode thread. Books, especially those with diverse characters and narratives, are powerful tools for fostering empathy and understanding. Through literature, students gain insights into different cultures, backgrounds, perspectives, cultivating a more inclusive and empathetic mindset. And this enhanced empathy translates into improved social skills and the ability to build meaningful relationships with their peers. Right. Promoting diversity and inclusivity in literature is essential to ensure that all young readers can see themselves reflected in the stories that they read. Here are some exceptional books for middle schoolers written by people of color or featuring diverse characters. The first one is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This memoir in verse shares the author's experiences growing up as an African-American girl in the 1960s and 70s, and it addresses meaningful topics like identity and the power of words. The next book is called Ghost, and it's by Jason Reynolds, and it's the first book in the track series, and it follows Castle, Ghost, Cranshaw, who's a talented runner, and he's dealing with his troubled past while discovering the potential within himself. The next is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This coming-of-age story of Esperanza, she's a young Latina girl living in Chicago, and she's trying to find her place in the world, and it really represents that. And as a Latina girl, I really do appreciate that. (laughs) I love it. Number four is Inside Out and Back Again by Thana Lay. This award-winning novel in verse, again, chronicles the experiences of a 10-year-old Vietnamese girl named Ha as she and her family flee Saigon during the Vietnam War and settle in Alabama. Yeah, that's a good one, actually. I read that one not too long ago. The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. And wow, this book is awesome. It's filled with slick wordplay type poetry and clever font techniques. And it follows twin brothers Josh and Jordan as they face challenges on and off the basketball court. They address sibling rivalry and identity. And it's so good. Seriously, don't discount it because it's written kind of in poetry style. Yeah. Your kids are going to love this one. It sounds neat. Uh, The next is The Gauntlet by Karuna Riazzi. This middle grade fantasy adventure draws inspiration from Arabian folklore. And it follows a Bangladeshi American protagonist named Farah as she embarks on a treacherous board game based quest to save her brother. The next one is One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia, and this is set in the 1960s, and it follows three African-American sisters who travel to Oakland, California to spend the summer with their estranged mother and become involved in the Black Panther movement. It's so good, and it's one of the readers in the Build Your Library curriculum. Yeah, I think it was in level six. We really, really enjoyed that book. Uh, The next is Stella by Starlight by Sharon M. Draper. Set in the segregated South during the Great Depression, the story revolves around 11-year-old Stella as she grapples with racial injustice and finds the courage to speak up. Right. The next one is Front Desk by Kelly Yang. And this is an empowering novel that explores life of Mia Tang, who is a 10-year-old Chinese-American girl who helps her parents manage a motel and faces challenges while fighting for justice and equality. And lastly is We Are Not Yet Equal, Understanding Our Racial Divide by Carol Anderson and Tanya Bolden. This nonfiction book examines the history of systemic racism in the United States, and it provides crucial context and fosters conversations about race and justice and equality. Yeah, and these books offer authentic voices, diverse perspectives, and stories that resonate with young readers from all kinds of backgrounds. They celebrate diversity and provide windows into different cultures and experiences, fostering empathy, understanding, and a sense of belonging. Right, and we've uh, talked often about Amber O'Neill Johnston's book, A Place to Belong, and uh, she runs a website called Heritage Mom, and she lists a lot of really incredible, diverse books on her website. We'll link to it. We've done that in another episode before, too, but I uh, highly recommend like everything that she's got on her list. She's just uh, just really awesome, and her, and her book, too, of course, is wonderful. You know, reading stands as a cornerstone of middle school education. It's unlocking that potential for academic success, personal growth, lifelong learning. By embracing the written word, students are going to develop critical skills and expand their knowledge, sharpen their minds, and cultivate empathy. 
Yeah, and as we empower middle schoolers on their literary adventures, we equip them with the tools they need to navigate life both academically and socially. Hopefully you'll find some new favorites on this list or are nodding your head in agreement over books that you've already have on your shelf right now. Right. I'm uh, adding to my list and also nodding my head at the same time. Please feel free to like add titles to our comment section when this episode comes out. We would love to hear additional book recommendations. Like I always, I'm kind of a book list hoarder and I'm always keeping a list of different things. My Goodreads is like a million books long, but we would love to keep adding to this list. And so please help us out with that um and tune in next week for episode 43 when we talk about more books but this time we're going to be talking about the top 10 books every homeschool parent should read yeah there's some good ones on this list i know it's gonna be a good one i'm excited see See you later cheers be sure to check us out on our website at btdthomeschool.com as in been there done that btdthomeschool.com You can join our mailing list and get news and updates on future podcasts and be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at the BTDT Been There Done That Homeschool Podcast.